Scientists woke up ancient life that's been under the sea for a hundred million years. Yes, this is true. While the last frontier is probably space, we still haven't investigated a whole lot of our oceans, particularly stuff that is miles down. Researchers keep finding that deeper and deeper in the ocean, there's life. Sometimes they find it sealed inside of rocks or under sediment. These little guys are extremophiles, and they haven't interacted with other bacteria on Earth for a hundred million years. They've been living in these tiny pockets of sediment, only interacting with each other for that time. A hundred million years. They believe these guys live in a perpetual state of torpor, meaning they have very slow metabolisms and don't do much. Living on the bottom of the ocean is not an easy job. When stuff expires and floats down through the ocean, there's a lot of stuff that's going to eat it before it gets to the very bottom. So they're either going to have to make their own food, and that is possible, or they're going to be using the little bit of carbon that they get, and that's what they found. And they also found that they were capable of growing them in a lab, which is also interesting. When people take stuff from the bottom of the ocean, it usually explodes, so the fact that these guys were capable of living under normal pressure with ample resources is also a little bit surprising. Genetically, they're probably going to be a bit different than they were 100 million years ago, but still, separated from other bacterial populations, they're probably going to be quite unique, and it'll be interesting to see what these guys can do. Research on critters that live in the most extreme environments, like those that live in hydrothermal vents near boiling water, give us hope for us finding life on other planets. Aside from the fact that most of the research on early Earth means that life probably started in a place like a hydrothermal vent, it also tells us that life is adaptable and almost impossible to get rid of entirely. Yes, every time we climb through a cave miles deep, we're finding something alive. I will tell you that mountaintops are near sterile, though. There's not a lot of oxygen, and we primarily like to use oxygen as life. Not everything does. But also, mountaintops get blasted with UV light. So it is interesting that there are some limitations. Near sterile, not totally sterile. We can talk about that. Now, it is a little bit silly to think that the conditions on Earth would be perfectly matched to other planets. So when we see something that has a similar chemistry, we can't exactly expect that life could only exist there. We don't know every condition in which it took to make life happen. Quite likely, and I could be wrong, I think we're going to find that there's a lot more life with a lot of different characteristics and we could have ever expected on Earth. If you wanted it to just be exactly what it is here, then your only option is panspermia. It would have to come from Earth, because otherwise there's always going to be small variations. Though one of the big questions is, if you roll that dice a million times, a billion times, will we end up getting similar life just because it is the most stable? There's more kinds of base pairs than the DNA that we use here. Sometimes viruses use alternative base pairs. There's many more amino acids than we use for our own proteins. Bacteria use more, viruses use even more. So either quadrupeds with DNA as we know it are going to be the dominant life form, or we'll find something else that works too. I mean, I'm kind of chauvinistic to say quadrupeds are bipeds. I mean, insects have existed for a long time and they seem to be doing just fine. 